Well, first of all, um, I want to thank you, even though I'm a lot more depressed now than I was when I got here, but I do want to thank each and every one of you for all your hard work and for speaking the truth and for you know, what you're doing to represent us in Concord. So my question is, I guess, worst case scenario, if everything marches forward and this budget goes through, in 2012, if we remain active, as Larry, I think, has threatened me to do, you know, and win back the House and the Senate, what are the possibilities of rolling back? I mean, what is the reality of looking at everything that had passed and trying to make it right again? Probably lots of people like to answer that. I, I would just say that the danger is that we're going to lose the infrastructure. Uh, if if a you know if a school goes under uh, or or, or nonprofit goes under, even if we put the budget back in two years, that may, they may not all be there. But anyway, there's some others. I. I think that we can't wait till 2012. I think we have to be active now because again, as I said, we have two more bites of the apple and we can't wait because what will happen is if this one bill that has the super majority to change things or whatever goes through, we're really gonna have a tough time. So I think that the opportunity is not looking at 212, which a lot of people are. We have to look at today and tomorrow and put the pressure on the people who are now going to decide this. Yes, I can obviously second Jack because it's always best to prevent something from being destroyed in the first place than trying to build up something after it's been destroyed. It takes a lot more time and effort to rebuild something and it's very easy to destroy something. For example, if the shellfish program were to disappear two years, you can't just start the shellfish program up and say, okay, we're hiring the people back to the shellfish program. It takes three years of data, of water quality data and other data to submit to FDA and so forth to reestablish your, your shellfish events to make them safe and compliant with the National Shellfish Sanitation Program. With the criminal laboratory and other laboratory issues, once you lose certification in certain testing procedures, you just can't bring back those testing procedures and start doing them on day one again. When you hire the people back, you have to then reestablish the certification with the national programs in order to be recertified to do the testing you need to do. That takes time. The people that you lay off aren't going to sit here and sit back twiddling their thumbs waiting for the state in two years to decide they want to hire them back. Good people are going to go elsewhere. They're going to find jobs elsewhere. We're going to lose quality people and it's not going to be easy to re so, you know, again, this is not just simply what's happening now. It's going to, this two-year disaster that will occur as a result of this budget will take many, many, many years, longer than two years, to recover from the disaster. It's, it's sort of like a tsunami. You don't recover from a tsunami. It takes 10 minutes to do a tsunami, but it takes years to recover from a tsunami, and that's what we're facing. Representative Marshall. Thank you. The unfortunate thing is, it's going to take two years for this budget. Uh, it's going to take two years for this budget to go in effect, and then when it does, and all this disaster falls, if we're reelected, we're going to get blamed for it, <laughs> just like the federal government is being blamed for the disaster that happened, you know, eight years previous. Aren't you used to that? <laughs> Um, I have a question about the supermajority proposal. Uh, is it a law or is it a constitutional amendment? And if it is a constitutional amendment, what is the process for it to happen? It's a constitutional amendment. It, it has to be passed by two thirds of the House and Senate, and then by uh, two thirds of the uh, sorry, sixty percent, not quite two thirds. Of the, uh, of the voting, voting public. So it would go to? It would go on the ballot. On the ballot. And yes. which, which, would it be a special ballot or would it go on the next general election? It's on the general election ballot. So it would be in? 2012. 2012. November 2012. Okay. Yes, in the back. 
sorry, I can't see right here. Possibly Terry. Do you have a guess as to what the Senate's going to do with this, generally speaking and philosophically? Is that a budget? Right. Um, generally, from what I've heard from the Finance Committee Chair and the Senate President, is that um, don't, they said, don't expect anything too much different than what the House did, that there are a few areas here and there, but that the bottom line won't be very much different. Um, my, if I had to guess, I would say they will take out the non-budgetary policy issues, like the retirement piece. They, put, they actually put the Reggie repeal in the budget, even though we had already passed that. Um, the collective, no collective bargaining, that the Senate will take those pieces out of the budget. They really don't belong in the budget. Um, that they may make a few changes, particularly if I had to guess, I'd say to services for developmentally disabled and mental health services, um, because there's been a lot of, see, this is what Jackie's talking about. If you make a lot of noise, right, there's been and good for the people that are making a lot of noise, right? Um, so they're hearing that, and so there is some sense that they'll probably use those services a little bit. Um, but aside from that, unless they're willing to raise the revenue estimates or not do some of the tax cuts that, they, that the House has passed, there isn't any money for them to restore any of these others. So, I'm not hopeful for big changes. Um, I am hopeful for small changes, um, but I also would agree that um, I think you know the most important thing that all of us can do is to make sure that our voice is heard, to make sure that not only um, we are educated about what's going on, and so it's helpful to have you all here knowing what the particulars are in the budget, but to make sure that all your friends and neighbors know what's going on and to write letters to the editor to make sure that people that you don't know know what's going on and, and hopefully in that way um, we'll be able to make at least some difference in the process before it's over now because I absolutely agree. Rich, you gave a great example with the shellfish about how we can't just recover in a two-year period. It'll take us a long time to recover. And I will tell you that around the State House, many of us have heard um, some of the newer members of the legislature say, quite frankly, that that is their intent, that they have been elected because they don't want government. And whatever they can do now, even if they don't get reelected, that they're going to do so much damage that it will take years and years to recover from it. Um, I'm not saying that they're doing that. They're saying that they're doing that. Um, and, and the problem is that it's true that with some damage that they're doing, it will take years and years to recover. So um, we're all up there fighting to save as much as we can. And all we can do is ask you to help us out in the public to make sure that the public is aware of what's going on because again I'll say I don't believe this is what um, I don't believe this is what the public voted for uh, when they went to the polls in November. I just also would like to say that it's not just the budget that we're looking at. We have in the state house a very anti police law enforcement atmosphere. They are passing bills to videotape any police officer that makes an arrest. Uh, they, uh, want, they do not want any, uh, any laws. That, if they're standing on the street corner and they'll walk up and interfere with an arrest and ask to, don't ask, but videotape it. They're very anti-law enforcement. That's a very bad atmosphere for the state. We have a lot of hard-working men and women up there that do their job. They're there because we hired them to be there. And when I say that that anti-law enforcement is out there, it's just not a minor little thing. It is very forceful. And the things that's coming out of the state house, 
Out of the Criminal Justice Committee alone are horrible. And in the future, they're going to really hurt us. And they're going to hurt the young people of the state. Thank you, Mr. Jackie. But would you agree that there's an exception that it's okay for the state police to guard the House and the Speaker of the House? Oh, he's sending home. I'll let the generals. <laughs> yes.